ladies and gentlemen. Now to continue with our workshop series, our workshop instructor, Mr. Mike Holler. Same pipe scrubber that you see in the little glass jar here, where the big bubble would come out and then it's broken up by all the little weaving paths of the pipe scrubber. Another way is through a diffuser plate where we have the air coming down through the center, then you see the holes that are drilled the whole way around the perimeter there. So the one big bubble comes out and then it's broken into a bunch of smaller bubbles by the diffuser plate. So now, let me just rehash everything. We're gonna bring air in through, and like in this bubbler, it comes down through this big pipe and then diffuses underneath the plate. Here we've got a steel tube that runs down, discharges the air where it bubbles up through the stainless steel wool. The plate should be just below the top of the surface level of the fuel. So that you have the big bubble come up and it's gonna hit the plate and it's just kind of work its way around and then work up through. So you can have it pretty much anywhere underneath the surface, but I seem to refer just a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch under the surface level of the fuel. We're trying to phase change our liquid fuel into a vaporized fuel. That vapor then gets fed to the reactor, but if you feed liquid into the reactor, you don't get a very good reaction. In fact, you don't get any reaction. Which on gasoline, that may not be so bad because at least you're vaporizing the fuel in the reactor and you'll get better mileage than you would without it. But when you put other things in here, your engine doesn't run very well on vaporized, vaporized used engine oil. So we gotta get that stuff vaporized before feeding it into the reactor. So that's what we're trying to do with the bubbler is vaporize the fuel. After we vaporize the fuel, then we send it into the reaction chamber. Here's a reaction chamber where we make a bend here and a bend here, and then this pipe goes in through one end out the other straight. Now, we have a pipe inside of a pipe. The outer pipe, even with the inner pipe in there, is still going to flow the same amount of exhaust gases as it would had stock. Pi R squared, surface area of stock pipe, plus pi R squared, surface area of the outer diameter of your inner pipe. Add the two together, work it backwards. That'll give you what you need for your new outer pipe. And if it's between sizes, let's say whatever number you come up with is halfway between this size and this size, go with the smaller size, not the bigger. Let's go to the reaction rod. Reaction rod made of steel. Inner pipe made of steel. Outer pipe made of steel. A lot of people say, well, will other materials work? Yes, they will. And some work better than steel. A lot of materials don't work at all, though. So to keep it simple, steel, steel, and steel. Now, the clearance between this rod and the inner pipe is going to be about the same no matter what you're building, whether it's a small setup like this something the size of the Suburban, or if you've got an irrigation pump that's gonna take a reactor like this, the clearance is still pretty much the same. So we want to tune the diameter of this rod and this pipe for the size of the engine. The length of the rod is tuned to the fuel that we're using. Now, if we were gonna run, say, propane through the reactor, propane has very small molecules. Those are three carbon molecules. It's a very light fuel. To break that down does not take much. For a propane system, we might have an inch and a half or two inch long reaction rod. Do a fantastic job. Gasoline, that's gotta be longer because it's much heavier than propane. So there are anywhere from four to seven and a half inches, depending on a few other things. But if we look at, say, diesel or used engine oil, now we're getting into some pretty long rods because the bigger and the bulkier the molecule, the longer it takes to do the job on them and turn them into plasma. We need a longer reaction rod in there, longer chamber to house the rod. So let's say we're using gasoline. Let's say that, uh, well, this is uh, more of a gas diesel rod, okay, 50% diesel. We need to know how long we need to make the chamber, right? Well. Here, you can see the pipe starting to come outside of the exhaust. That means that the effective reaction chamber is gonna stop about here. 
So we have reaction chamber in here, and just about here then, the rest of this pipe doesn't do anything, cannot be used for a reaction. So we have from here till about where the muffler starts. We look at the way the rod fits in there, then this reaction chamber is just about perfect for this rod that we're gonna use. We have between a half and one inch clearance on either side of the rod, inlet side and outlet side. Got between a half and a full inch worth of clearance between where the rod ends and where you run out of inner pipe. Once you get a reaction going, that rod's gonna center itself where it wants to be. As I slide this, the rod moves freely in there. That's what you want. You don't want the rod pressed in, you don't want it wedged in, you want it to be able to do its thing and move around as it sees fit. So you get the tabs turned so that it just slides in there nice and easy like. The rod does have to have steel in it. I know there's people thinking about all the materials they're gonna try because I said, yes, some work better than steel. So I'm gonna be the one to figure out what that other stuff is. As long as you have ferrous metal iron in the rod, knock yourself out. I tried a brass rod and I didn't get squat for results because there's no iron in there. Now remember, we have an electromagnetic field in here. That all emanates from the rod. And if the rod cannot carry that electromagnetic field like the brass cannot, then we don't have our reaction. You mean between the tabs and the wall? I'd say five to 8,000 between each one. If you have pretty clean pipe, you could make it tighter than if you have pretty rough pipe. Like the black pipe we use has a ridge that goes up the center and you get occasional pieces of flashing on the inside. So you'd want it a little bit smaller. The purpose of the tabs is just to keep it kind of centered in that pipe. All right, it's not to locate it. And Paul tells me that once you got a good reaction going, and I've seen evidence of this to support it, but once you have a good reaction going, you wouldn't need the tabs. That the rod will just start out sitting on the bottom of the pipe. As you build up the reaction, it'll just kind of pick up and hover there, electromagnetically centering itself. No need for tabs. So it'll center itself this way and this way, all by itself, with or without the tabs. So you need some stops in there because usually when you have something like this elbow here, if the rod comes out past the pipe, it'll drop down and then the tabs will stick. And if it goes that far, then you've got part of the rod that's not doing you any good for a reaction anyways when you do get the heat build up. So there's a couple things you can do. One is the twisted wire, and you just drop it in there to kind of put a spacer between your fitting and the rod. Another thing you can do, get a 12-penny nail and a drill bit just a hair smaller than the nail. Figure out where you want the end to be on your pipe. Drill a hole through there, drive the nail in, cut off all but about an eighth of an inch, flip it over, and then mushroom that part that you cut off with a hammer. Now the rod will go as far as that nail and stop. The difference in diameter of the rod between the generators and the Volkswagen is one thirty-second of an inch and that makes a difference.